Creating your own sublimation designs to make amazing mugs has never been easier. With Creative Fabrica Studio, you don't need any external software, just your browser window, and you can create fun designs to be able to use anywhere. My name is Kelly Rousseau, representing Creative Fabrica, and I'm going to show you how to use Creative Fabrica Studio, what you're gonna to need to be able to create these awesome mug designs, and show you just how easy it is. Let's get started. To start off, you're going to need a sublimation printer and sublimation ink. This is a special type of printer and ink that needs to be used with sublimation. You won't be able to use regular inkjet ink as that won't work with sublimation. If you don't have a sublimation printer, there are companies that you can send off your prints to and they will print out your designs for you, which is what I'm going to do because I do not have my own sublimation printer, but I love being able to occasionally do fun sublimation projects. We're of course going to need the design and we're going to cover that in a few minutes, but we'll also need access to Creative Fabrica Studio. So make sure that you sign up for an account down below. It is completely free to use. You will also need a sublimation ready mug. I'm going to be using a Cricut infusible ink mug as they are perfectly compatible with sublimation. I'm also going to be using my Cricut mug press for this. Make sure that the mug that you have is going to fit inside your mug press as they aren't compatible with all types of sublimation mugs. I recommend having a heat resistant mat nearby to put your mug onto once it's done and while it cools down. I always recommend to have Teflon paper or butcher paper or extra sheets of copy paper lying around to protect your mug press. You can also have alcohol wipes or a lint roller nearby to wipe down your product before you place your sublimation design onto it. You will also need some heat resistant tape, so make sure you have that nearby. Some people also like to use heat resistant gloves. So if you want to make sure that you're protecting your hands, then you can use some heat resistant gloves as well. But now let's take a look at the design that we're going to need for this project. I know that I want to make a pink book themed mug for a friend of mine. So I'm going to type in books and search through many of the designs that they have, lots of which are perfectly compatible with sublimation. You can choose either a single image, just like this one, or if you want to create your own little design on the mug, then another great option is to go for the bundles that have lots of different pictures with them. As an example, this one, it has lots of different images and things that you can create to collate your own fancy design. I'm going to be using the Valentine Coquette Pink Books PNG, so I'm going to just download this and I'm going to combine it with some text in Studio to show you my fun design. Once it's downloaded, you're going to open up the zip file and extract the PNG to your computer. We're then going to go to creativefabrica.com studio and I'm going to click on start designing. It'll open up my homepage and I can click on create new design. Now here is where we're going to set the dimensions of our project. I'm going to be using a 15 ounce mug. So I'm going to change this unit here from pixels to inches. And I'm going to type in 8,75 and under the height, I'm going to be using 4,25. I'm then going to make sure that the DPI, which is the dots per inch, kind of the quality of the design is set to print, which is 300. And once you've got the size dimension set, you're going to click create new design. It will then open up your canvas to look just like this. Now we need to upload our design into studio. So I'm going to come to the bottom left hand corner and I'm going to click on uploads. From here, I'm going to click on upload files and add in the design that I've chosen into Creative Fabrica Studio. Once it's available within Studio, we can now add it to our page and start our design. So I'm going to just click on it and add it to the page. Now that it's on our page, we can create our fun design. So I'm going to click and drag it to the corner because I want to have this kind of tiled at the back and then I want to have words over the front. So I want to make sure this is duplicated across the background. Now I can do this in two different ways. I can either manually duplicate it or I can just click repeat on background and it'll tile the entire thing for me. So I can then delete that section and all the hard work is done for me. If you want to have them a little bit larger, you can just click undo until your design is back to normal and then you can have them tiled a little bit larger so we can enlarge our picture 
and we can click on duplicate and then we can adjust them and have them set up how we want. And once we're happy with how that looks, we can start moving on to adding text onto our design. So I'm going to click on the text function and I wanna add a nice big heading to this one. So I'm going to click on heading and type in what I wanted to say. So I wanted to say one more chapter. I can then click on the box and drag it to where I want it to be and start to play around with the font and the colors and all of those kinds of things that make it really fun. There are many, many different fonts that you can choose from and you can scroll through all of them and see exactly which font that you want to use. For this particular design, I've chosen the spicy rice font. So I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and choose the spicy rice font. I'm going to just click on the corner and drag the design bigger so that it fits nicely and stands out in the middle of my design. And now I wanna change the look of the heading. So I'm going to select the color option. With these kinds of designs, I like to use the color dropper so that I can coordinate the colors within my design and have them all matching. So I'm going to click on the dropper and then move onto the page. And you can see how it zooms in on where the mouse is and you can see the color that is being selected. So I wanna make sure that I'm choosing a nice pink and even though we can't really see the words, we'll be able to see them in just a minute. Next, I like to select the border. I'm going to just increase the border weight a little bit so that it stands out. And then I'm going to change the border color and I'm going to do exactly the same thing by coordinating the colors with what is already in the design. So I'm going to click on the dropper tool and choose one of the darker pinks in this design. If you like the way that that looks, that is perfect. I want mine to be a little bit darker. So it has the pink color selected and I can just drag that and choose a slightly darker pink. It's still within the same color spectrum. So it matches the colors really nicely, but it makes your text stand out and match the design at the same time. You can play around with lots of other features within Studio, like you can center the text, you can change the width of the letters, the spacing, the line spacing. There are lots of different options that you can play around with with your design. So make sure that you're taking a look at everything that is available for your design. But I'm perfectly happy with what I created. So I'm going to click on share in the top right corner so that I can send my design to the people that are going to print it for me. I'm not going to click remove background as I don't want to print it as a PNG, but that is an option that you can use. If you know that your printer flips your image horizontally automatically, then do not select flip horizontally. Many sublimation printers automatically flip your prints. So make sure that you know whether your print is going to be automatically flipped or not. I know that the printer that I use flips the images for me, so I'm not going to select flip horizontally. And I'm going to save it as a PDF to maintain the image quality. So I'm going to click on PDF and it'll automatically download and open the PDF that we've just created. And once we've got the design printed, we can take out our mug press. We can switch our mug press on. We're going to wrap our design around our mug making sure to use our heat tape to stick it down so that it stays very well stuck down and won't move. Make sure that it is as tight as possible to your mug and add a few extra pieces of copy paper around the outside to protect your mug press. Place it in your mug press once it's warm and close the mug press. In about six minutes or so, it'll be done and it'll beep at you. So take your mug out and do one of two things. Either let your mug cool down with the paper still on or place your mug into lukewarm water. Make sure that it's not cold water because we don't want to crack our mug. What this does is it helps to keep your design crisp as your mug is still hot, which means that the ink might become a little bit fuzzy. And now your sublimation project is complete. Did you know that you could use Creative Fabrica Studio to create amazing sublimation designs? Let me know in the comments and let me know what sublimation projects you are going to be using this feature for. Make sure to follow Creative Fabrica for more awesome and inspiring crafting videos. And make sure to follow the Studio Tips and Tricks channel for more tutorials about how to use it and fun, inspiring projects that you can create. And remember that anything that you create within Studio is free to use commercially or personally. Thank you so much for joining. Can't wait to see you in the next one. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.